All right, everybody, welcome back to our channel. Um, I'm excited to do this video today because we're actually here in the store and obviously you can see behind me, we've got a mess. We're back to working on the 4,000, so we're full steam ahead. And for any of you that are gonna make it here for April, for Reefa Blusa in Orlando, you get a chance to actually see it in all its glory. So today we're gonna talk about a few really fundamental basics. And I'd like to take a different approach today. I, I wanna try to make things a little bit more compartmentalized. When we talk about water chemistry, we talk about too much generally. So today we're gonna talk about alkalinity and a couple of different delivery methods that we here at Worldwide Corals use. So one of the common denominators in all methods of reef keeping, it doesn't matter if you don't do water changes, it doesn't matter if you do regular water changes, it doesn't matter if you do moonshiner method or so on and so forth, whatever else is out there. The one common denominator is water testing and understanding your water parameters. One of our favorite delivery methods is Kalkwasser. And we're gonna kind of go a little bit deep into that today. I'd like to talk about what it is, how we use it, and what the importance in our reef tank is. And for all practical purposes, if you have a reef tank and you intend to keep corals in it, alkalinity is gonna be critically important for you. Here at Worldwide Corals, we use two products primarily. One being Brightwell's Calc Plus 2, as well as the Reef Code B. And remember, we're only talking about alkalinity and its delivery, okay? When we're talking about Calcwasser, we use tons of it. I mean, we're talking pounds of material daily. So we use Calcwasser for a couple of main reasons. One being, we deliver all of our top off water with an enriched Kalkwasser solution. So that takes a lot of the thinking out of it for us. At a point in this video, we're gonna show how we do it in the farm. I'm gonna show you how I do it in my tank and very similar the way Vic does it in his tank. And the, the purpose for showing you that is going to be how simple it really is, right? We're going to maintain our salinity, but at the same time, we're gonna have an available alkalinity source for our coral with the added benefit of calcium. I'm no expert at this stuff. I just know coral. I'm no scientist. I don't know the molecular structure of the product. I just know what I've been doing for the last 20 years in this hobby. And I can tell you one thing that's never changed is the fact that alkalinity is important to everything. Maybe we take a minute and we go look at how we do it in the farm. What do you think? Okay, so I wanted to show you really the simplicity of what we do here. And a lot of it is because there's this concept that Kalkwasser is difficult to administer. And I really wanted to drive home how not true that that is. Inside of this barrel, there is a concentration of RODI water and Kalkwasser that we mix every single day for our facility. And the reason why we do this is we actually add a powdered solution and then we add our water on top of this. And this is it. There's, there's nothing more to it. It's RODI water and it's six grams per gallon. That's just the concentration that we use here. And what this does is it gives it settle time. So when we're adding that powder and then the water on top of it, it's making a really stiff solution that is, it's really only actively this strong for a short period of time. So we make a day's worth of Kalkwasser. But anyways, this is literally, this is the heartbeat of our, our operation here. I would say 99.9% .9 of our systems run Kalkwasser as their primary source of elk. And I mean, as, as any of you that have used it over the years have realized, it's not gonna be your elk for everything, right? It only has the ability to manage a certain amount. But at the end of the day, if you can use something like this, it's gonna drive your pH up and it's easy to administer, then why not? So that's kind of the idea behind what we do here. But yeah, you see there's nothing grand and glorious. We keep it covered up, we mix it once a day and we add it to our top offs once a day. So I wanna show you the top offs over here. So we're here in our farm. This is actually uh, system 10 and 10, 11 and 12 run exactly the same. The reason why I brought you guys here to show you this is I wanted to, to go back to the concept of how simple it is to use this product. So when I showed you in the back, those green barrels that we, we use to mix our solution, what we do is daily when we, when we do all of our top offs, instead of topping off the system, we top off these glass tanks. And as you can see, it's dirty. There's wires everywhere. This is a workspace. And at the end of the day, we're worried about the functionality more than anything. So here, 
These are two 30 gallon tanks and in a single day we'll use this amount of water. And the purpose of talking about that is it's only for top off. So as water evaporates, we have this Camor pump right here and you can see it's running on a continuous speed, which is 25 mils per minute. Okay, those 25 mils per minute run 24 seven, seven days a week. And it's adding this concentration of Kalkwasser over a 24 hour period. So what it's doing is it's giving us a constant supply of calcium and alkalinity as well as the pH. There's things you can do to finer tune how the Kalkwasser is administered, but we like to do it over a 24 hour period. Some of the people out there, they like to do it based on pH. Some of the people out there like to do it based on consumption because you'll notice that your tank will consume more calcium and alkalinity and magnesium at different times of the day. You'll notice that the pH is different at different times of the day. But again, because we have so much going on here, we really just try to dial in consistency. So all of our systems back here, these three that are exactly the same, are 10, 11, and 12, they're all running on 25 mils per minute, 24 seven. And it's easy. We know we mix six grams per gallon. We know we always add fresh water back to the, to the solution. And we know that all we gotta do is calibrate our, our dosing pump and we have a constant supply. We also run a calcium reactor here too. We'll talk about this in a different video. This is to fine tune our system. Really, I mean, if I'm just to give a cliff note version on that, it's just a fine tune our system. The Kalkwasser is the workhorse here. Even though we have to pre-mix the solution before it goes into any of our reservoirs, you're still gonna get a lot of like precipitation. And a lot of times you hear it mentioned as an impurity in the Kalkwasser. This one here was yesterday's solution. We're not sucking from the bottom of this vat. This one here is today's solution which again, it's not coming from the vat. So we're only using the clear solution on the top. One of the ways that, uh, a cleaner way to administer Kalkwasser in a, in a regular hobbyist or residential setting is a calc stirrer. For us, they're just impractical. It's another device to maintain. It's another plug to have to plug in. And this, in this case, this is the best possible use for us. Um, a calc stirrer is another very viable option, but it will require either a peristaltic pump for feed or utilizing your auto top off to feed the calc stirrer. So just something to consider if you guys are looking into that. Okay, so we're jumping around everywhere. We're back over here in the office. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, it gives us an opportunity to kind of do a quick update here. Uh, after my tank move, things settled in really nice and it's looking pretty good. So we'll have some good shots of the coral here. Um, but secondarily, I wanted to talk about the way that I use Kalkwasser over here. And it's a little bit more of a controlled environment and it's more applicable to what most people are gonna do in their home aquarium. Here, I actually use just a single five gallon container. And the reason why I do that is, is this, this is a little bit more than a day's worth of Kalkwasser. And I do that so that I keep my container clean. And if you look, this is just drawing here from a Versa pump and it's set on 8.5 mils per minute. Here, there's just a little bulkhead and this draws from right around three quarters of an inch from the bottom of this container. And when it's empty, I take it, I go over next door to our green barrels. I fill this full of solution and bring it back over and I plug it in. Really simple and easy. We're putting just a regular drip at a predetermined rate, which is our evaporation, into the tank all day, every day. Really, really easy. And actually you can see down here too, very similar to what we have in the farm. We have calcium reactors over there. And I had mentioned we use those to fine tune the system. This is no different. So Kalkwasser is one thing. We're delivering alk, we're de delivering a high pH solution, but it's a little bit inconsistent. So when you're doing your water testing, you realize that you can dial in one mils, two mils, three mils, 20 mils, whatever, more, depending on your demand, by adding like a, a reef code A and B, which is just calcium and alkalinity. And that's gonna give you that really finite number. Cause like I said, in the very beginning of this, this video, there's the one common denominator. If you're gonna have a successful reef tank, it doesn't matter what methodology you use to keep your tank, you have to test your water. The lazy reefers out there 
are not successful and they don't test their water and they think they know better and there's usually something catastrophic that happens along with that. If it hasn't happened, it's going to. So again, back to the, the one fundamental basic. If you don't test your water, you don't know what's going on and you're not gonna be successful long-term. So in this theory, I test my elk weekly, I test my salinity weekly, and generally I test my phosphates weekly. I kind of go on and off with that because you know that's, that's one thing that doesn't, the way that I keep my tank, it doesn't fluctuate much in a given week, but it can, okay? And the purpose of this fundamental discussion is to hone in on the things that really matter. You know, in your life, you, you, you find yourself prioritizing different things. You know, as time progresses, those priorities change. When it comes to your reef tank, the one priority should always be water testing. And that should never change. It doesn't matter how advanced of a hobbyist you are. It doesn't matter what kind of aquarium you're keeping, whether it's a softy tank, whether it's a, a stony tank, whether it's just a, a full on mixed reef, you always have to test your water. Soft corals are a lot more forgiving. So don't, don't succumb to the idea that you don't have to test your alkalinity or your calcium when it comes to soft corals, because that's really not true. At the end of the day, we look at water chemistry and this, this concept, salinity, is always going to be important. We need to know how much salt's in the tank. That also affects the other mineral densities too. So, and when I say mineral densities, I'm talking about calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, those three. Um, nitrate and phosphate are pollution. So I separate those two. Out of those five elements, nitrate and phosphate, they're going to be how dirty your tank is. Very, very basic stuff. Let's deliver a consistent source of alkalinity. If you want, you can fine tune it with a doser or a calcium reactor, whatever it may be. You're not going to do either of these properly unless you test your water. You know, going back to the reason why we came over here, I wanted to show in a very organic and I would say applicable setting. This is what most hobbyists are going to do. They're gonna use something simple like Calquas or a two-part. And there's nothing difficult at all about refilling a five-gallon bucket daily. And you can probably do it every two or three days too, but you know, there's there's an efficacy in the, the Calquas or solution that degrades over time. So in you know, when you look at it like that, you're probably better off having a shorter supply um, you know maybe a day like i said or two or three but if you decide that you want to use calcwasser and you decide well maybe i don't have time to refill this every day or two the stirrer is a really good option and there's a couple out there you know reef octopus makes a really good one uh, two little fishies has one that's been around forever uh, a vast marine has a really good one that I've used in the past, but they they work. You know, it allows you to put calc powder in the bottom of it, and then as it's topping off through that calc stir, you're getting an enriched solution. So you don't have to worry about its potency over the next couple of days. Uh, we can go take a minute and and look and see how Vic does his, which is very similar, but it's a little bit different. So let's go check it out. Okay, so this is how Vic does it. It's, it's very, very similar to the way that I do. This, this compartment, as you can see here, um, this is his calc compartment. He uses the same solution that we keep there in the back, the same six grams per gallon. He uses the same Versa pump like I do to deliver a constant supply to replenish his top off water. But the difference here is he's actually topping off inside of this container. So very similar. This is like a this is like a blend between a calc stir and what I keep over there in my five gallon bucket. Because you see this in the bottom, this is all of the stuff that doesn't go into solution. And when they top this off, believe it or not, this, this solution right here will become richer and richer because it kind of fluffs this bottom. And I don't know how to say it any differently other than the fact that every time you fluff that bottom, the concentration of elk here gets a little bit stiffer. As a matter of fact, he has a trident on here and you can see when we top off, it kind of stair steps. So we top it off and the elk goes up a little bit like this and then it stair steps down over the next couple of days. So this is actually more than he needs for a single day or even two days. I think this lasts him three days. Let's talk about application here for a minute. This is an 80 gallon tank. 
really, really high maintenance, very high demand because he's trying to keep the best acros. He's trying to keep them at their, their peak coloration and growth, right? He's, he's riding that ragged edge. He's got a frag tank, so there's a lot of corals in this tank. Now, you can do the same exact thing with a, a 20 gallon reef tank that has only stonies in it. And maybe you won't mix it at six grams per gallon, but, but maybe you start with like one gram per gallon and you use that as your top off water. It doesn't matter, it's the same application. You're just finding the concentration that works for you. But because there's a lot of latency, you know, involved with reef keeping, you know, you, you kind of want to pick a single concentration and run that over a period of time. If you find that your alkalinity rises over time, then you're going to have to cut that down some, you know, so there will be a little bit of playing with it involved. And, and the reason why I say that is, is you can't not top off. You have to continue to deliver the same amount of RO water, but the concentration needs to be weaker. Now, let's say over time you develop more coral growth, you have more corals in the tank, then all you're gonna do is increase the amount of powder that you're using in that setting. It'll allow you to keep the elk stable as your demand goes up. There will be a point, you know, and, and we use six grams per gallon. There's probably a better calculator out there. That's just what we've always done. But there's, there's gonna be a point where you can only add so much powder before it doesn't enrich the water anymore. And at that point, you'll have to use some sort of alternate for alkalinity, but this works really good. And it, it doesn't matter if you have a five gallon tank, a 10 gallon tank, a 150 gallon tank, you're always gonna benefit from the additional pH. You're always gonna need some form of alkalinity and it's simple, so why not use it, right? So for those that are just doing big water changes, they're using something like uh, Red Sea Coral Pro to buffer your elk higher. That way you can go a month without having to do any additives and you only do a water change. Try something like this. You may just see the benefit of it immediately because I mean, there's a reason why for me personally, 20 plus years I've been doing this in a commercial setting with worldwide corals, we've never not used calc washer. So there's gotta be merit behind it. So for those of you who don't test, test. For those of you who don't use anything to buffer your alkalinity, try. What's the worst can happen? If it's, as long as you're testing your water, nothing bad is gonna happen. But if you don't test your water, you can be certain that something is going to, and it's gonna be negative. So that's, that's the point that I'm trying to drive home this whole entire video is, if you test your water, you know what's going on. If you adjust your water correctly, you're only gonna benefit from it. For those of you who have not subscribed to our channel, please make sure you like and subscribe, leave comments below, because I think that if, if there's anything that I can provide, it's gonna be guidance from a controlled setting in which I'm speaking from experience and not on my rear end. So moving forward, if you guys have ideas for videos, I would love to be able to provide it to you, but I gotta try to keep it exciting somehow because looking at my face is not the answer. So let's go look at some corals. understand how things are up here.